this is the moment I've dreaded. Coming back to our home. Alone. Oh, Tim. Tim. You've been gone only an hour and already the house is empty without you. Darling, forgive me. I've held myself together through all our goodbyes, and I've tried to understand. But I still don't know why you should risk your life. You, the best-natured and dearest person in the world. I'll try to remember what you said last night. That years from now, this will seem the greatest adventure we ever had, even though we had it separately. But I have no courage, Tim. You know I have no courage, and I have no vision. And already I'm... I'm so very lonely. the past alive <laughs> like a warm room for you to come back to <laughs> I promise Darlings, are you awfully wet? Mm. Mm, Jay, such a nice, fresh cheek. <laughs> Better get your wet things off, Brig. Pop, get off all right? Was his train on time? I think it was just mean of Pop not to let us go to the station with you. Oh, darling, you know how much he loves you. He didn't even want me there. You know how he hates a fuss. And Louisiana's not so far, and he'll be home on leave before he goes. He looked so swell in his captain's uniform, didn't he? Bet the others were all jealous. I'd hate a squinchy little father. Pop looks like a parade all by himself. Mm. Did he? Did he have my present with him? Right in his pocket, Brig. I hope... I hope he keeps all his money in it and everything. I hope he buys all those generals a drink. And maybe he'll be a major by the time he gets home on leave. <laughs> he can be a major any time he wants to. And anyhow, he'd probably rather do something else with it anyway. Like... Like sending Mother a present or... Or... Or what, honey? Oh, I don't know. Buy some magazines or books, maybe. I wasn't really thinking. I have an idea. How would you kids like to play some gin rummy before dinner? Okay? Okay. Oh, let's not. It won't be the same without Pop. Not even gin rummy. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, soda? <laughs> Brig, are you never going to get out of this bathroom? I'll go fly a kite. I wish you were till I get through. Well, if you don't get through pretty soon, you'll brush all the enamel off your teeth. You all stop that bickerman. It's time you girls were getting yourselves to bed. Hi, Cecilia. Hello, 
Hello, Fidelia. Where have you been all day? Where's your mother? I'm in here, in Jane's room. All right, Princess, the mirror's all yours now. You can have a wonderful time just looking at yourself. Evening, Miss Hilton. Did Mr... Oh, I mean Captain Hilton get away all right this afternoon? Yes, Fidelia. He said to tell you he'd send you a postcard from New Orleans. What about you? How did things go? I got that job this afternoon, just like you tell them, with some lofty people uptown. That's good. The wages is mighty fine. I starts right away. But I ain't gonna be contentment. I ain't gonna be contentment like I've been right here all these years. Well, I'm afraid we're not going to be very contentment either, Fidelia. And what's more, I don't know what kind of a housekeeper I'm going to make. I can tell you something, Miss Hilton. You ain't gonna be very good. Oh, Fidelia. <laughs> I've been figuring out this budget, and I don't see how we're ever going to make it. I've already arranged to sell the car, and... I don't think the government pays them officers enough. I don't see why Mr. Hilton ain't worth as much to Uncle Sam as he was to that advertising company. Well, anyway, Fidelia, you'll probably have a much easier time than you've had taking care of all of us. Fidelia! You're not leaving us. What's the matter, Fidelia? Did we do something to make you mad? Honey, you couldn't do nothing to make me mad, no matter what. You're just like my own child. Did I hear something about Fidelia leaving? Now, Jane, I'm just as unhappy about it as you are. We can't keep up the payments on the house just by cutting down on your allowances. Dolly, first pop and now Fidelia. That's enough of that, Brig. I don't want no morning. Now, you just say good night to your sister and run right, along Jane. with me. You too, Jane. Tomorrow's a school day. I'll be right back. The Lord himself will just have to take care of these calamities somehow. You'll come to see us, won't you, Fidelia? Of course I will, child. Land sakes alive, if you don't learn to pick up your clothes, you never will keep a husband. Men don't fancy disordinment. Good night for now, Jane, honey. Good night, Fidelia. left of Fidelia's last cake, and I'm afraid it's pretty stale, but cake is cake these days. I don't care what they do, as long as they don't ration pickles. Yes, I know. You'll probably have chronic indigestion by the time the war's over. Psst, psst, psst. Hi, Gladys. What on earth's the matter with that child? Oh. Gladys is afraid of grown-ups, that's all. Well, I'd like to hear her say two words sometime, just to be sure she can talk. Who are you talking about, Gladys? Mm -hmm. How Brig can put up with her. Well, I don't think so much of your friends, either. They're all man-crazy, that's what they are. Just like you are. Oh, it's too early in the morning to argue with you. <laughs> Hurry up, you'll be late. And you can tell about Becky Anderson the next time she tries to hi-hat me. Good morning, Mr. Mahoney. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Mahoney. Good morning, good morning, girls. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Hilton. I heard you was without help, and I thought I'd bring over the groceries myself and see if there was anything I could do for you. Oh, well, that is nice of you, Mr. Mahoney. I think I'll need all the help I can get. By the way, I hope you won't mind waiting a little on last month's bill. Oh, God. I haven't received my first allotment check yet, and I'm afraid I'm not a very good manager. Oh, well, I know. Everybody's got problems yes. these days. Well, now, you take me, for instance. I'm trying to get enough of everything for my old customers. Would you believe it, Mrs. Hilton? One of them had the nerve to ask me why I didn't go into the black market. Me, with my boy in the service. You don't mean Johnny. Well, I wondered why I haven't seen him lately. Yes, ma'am, and he's a mighty fine boy. I have got a picture of him in his uniform right here. <laughs> well, I'd love to see him. Would you? 
You're very proud of him, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. There are two things that Johnny always wanted to be. One of them was to be an aviator. And what is Johnny's other ambition, Mr. Mahoney? Well, you wouldn't be believing this, maybe, but it's advertising. Advertising. My Johnny always wanted to be an advertising man. Oh. Well, I'm sure he'll be very successful at it. Uh, you really think that, do you, ma'am? Yes, I do. You do? Uh, well, well, I guess I'd better be running along. Goodbye, Miss Hilton. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Mahoney. Do you know, I think Mr. Hilton might like to help Johnny get into the advertising business when the war's over. Now, that is an idea. It wouldn't have occurred to me. Mr. Hilton is in the advertising business, isn't he? Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'd be delighted. We've always thought Johnny was a fine, intelligent boy. That he is, ma'am. That and a whole lot more. And you've really given us something to look forward to. Me and Johnny and the missus. And it was very nice of you to come and visit with me this way, Mr. Mahoney. Oh, not at all, ma'am. Not at all. Mother. Yes? Do you think that I could be a good secretary? Ah, secretary. Why don't you be a wife? You could be their mascot. Oh, all right. Go ahead and starve. See if I care. Sell magazines. Everybody's got magazines. I know. Why don't we take somebody into the house? You know, a rumor. Oh, well, if you're going to throw away aces, Jane, that's fine with me. But, Mother, listen to me. Why shouldn't we rent a room? There's such a terrible shortage in it. No, go away. Down with five. It's perfectly ridiculous, Brig. A stranger in our home. Where you get your ideas is beyond me. Certainly it's ridiculous. It's communism, that's what it is. Oh, poo. We could get an officer, maybe. And it might be sort of like having Pop back. An officer? Do you know, Mother, I think maybe she's right. I understand there's not a room to be had in town. It might be very patriotic of us to take an officer into our house. Patriotism hasn't anything to do with it. It's not We're really just crazy it. about you. We should do everything we call. can for our soldiers. <laughs> patriotic. Brig Jane, now that's enough. Do you want to finish this game or don't you? 102. It's a blitz. Turn out the dining room lights, Brig. Suppose Pop were looking for a room in some crowded city like this. Hurry up, Jane. It can't be that hard to figure out. And suppose there was a nice family like ours that had three bedrooms for three people. Don't you think it would be just malicious of them not to want to rent a room to Pop? Well, Jane, I want almost $6,000. 592 points at $10 a point. All right, deduct it from what you owe me. And poor Pop sleeping in the park. All right, all right. Pop is sleeping in the park, and the people are all malicious, and we decide to rent him a room. Now, you satisfied? You will, Mother? You'll do it? I didn't say I'd do it. I'll think about it. I just knew you couldn't be me like those characters in that other city. Come along. I wonder how much we can get for Jane's room. My room? How much will that be for three days? What? Oh, Brig, turn that thing off. I can't hear. I'm awfully sorry. Yes. Will, will this get into the early edition? Yes. Fireplace and bay window. Oh, all right. Put in homey atmosphere. Mother! Mother! Wait, please! Keep quiet, Brig. Would you send the bill to this address, please? Thank you. Mother, you don't mean you're going to rent your room. Of course I am. That's the room that'll bring the most money. I'll take your room, and you can double up with Jane. But, Mother, you're not going to put somebody in Pop's room. Oh, I didn't mean that. Now, you wouldn't want those characters in that other city to put Pop in anything but their best room, would you? But that's different. He's Pop. Good morning. Is this the place that advertised for uh, an officer? That's right. The real fireplace, nice bay window, southern exposure. That's right. Of course, I haven't seen the room yet, but the homey atmosphere certainly seems OK. I guess it's a deal. I'm sorry, but the room's already taken. Oh, I see. 
I'm sorry you had the trip for nothing. Yes, I can see you're grief-stricken. Jane. Hi, Beaver. Good morning. Mrs. Hilton, I presume? Yes. May I be permitted to observe this is the first house I've found in this godforsaken community that doesn't smell of cabbage. <laughs> Well, it does sometimes, but when... I was given to understand the office of the purchasing division, to which I have the misfortune to be attached, that you had a room for rent. Yes, but I specified an officer. You see, my husband... My name is Smollett, William G. Colonel, United States Army, retired. Retired, I might add, by virtue of certain fatuous opinions held in the War Department, which judge a man's usefulness neither by his experience nor his ability, but by the number of years since he was weaned. <laughs> Nora. Nora. There was nothing in the information I was furnished, madam, which indicated that you had children and domestic pets. Well, I'm sorry, but they go with the house. We won't and discuss it. With your permission, madam, may we dispense with further conversation? I should like to inspect the room. Oh, certainly. Just follow me. And I do hope you'll forgive me if I've been long-winded. Not at all, madam. Through a full and somewhat protracted existence, I have learned to accept the natural tendency of all women to be garrulous. Oh, you're very tolerant, Colonel. Indeed you can, Miss Hilton. You can tell me who had the kindness to leave on my bed this pronouncement from Washington. This lesson in old world courtesy and manners. Oh, I did that, Colonel Smollett. I just thought it might make it easier for us to get along. Oh, would you mind helping me with my aquarium? What? You see, Mother's going to use this room and I have to get my things into Jane's room. Now, if you'll just grab that end there. Now, you walk backwards and I'll steer you. The big one seems to be the commanding officer, kind of. Don't you think that's intriguing? Fascinating. Now, just a little over to the right. Be careful not to shake them. They're very sensitive. You must forgive me if I do anything wrong. This is my first experience hauling fish. Thanks, Colonel. I'll do as much for you someday. I'll tell you what you can do for me, young woman. There are certain elaborate suggestions on page three of this war communique concerning the condition, the schedule, and the equipment of the bathroom. Oh, yes. You do see. Then may I ask you to follow me for a moment? Of course. You know, Colonel Smollett, it was my idea that we should take in a rumor, and I'm so glad the whole thing's turned out so super. Since you are so ecstatic over the whole arrangement, may I make so bold as to ask whether you expect me to bathe under that? <laughs> But golly, Colonel Small, if there's a shower off Pop's room, I mean your room. And is it necessary that your paying guests share the facilities of the house with this, this vegetable life? But you don't understand. This is the philodendron Pop gave me. It needs water, and I don't think rainwater gives it enough nourishment. Really? Well, just as soon as you think there's no longer any danger of pernicious anemia, would you mind removing that topsoil? Oh, yes, and another thing. I neglected to inform your mother that I liked my breakfast promptly at seven. Coffee, thin toast, and two eggs, boiled two and a half minutes, under no circumstances more than three. But, golly, Colonel Small, we can't afford to give you breakfast. Indeed. Well, even as it is now, poor mother doesn't know what she's going to do. When Fidelia was here, the bills didn't seem to be so high. But now, with the way things are going Please, up, I just... Please, I'm quite prepared to pay. Oh, that's fine. Well, what would you say, to 50 cents a day? Oh, it seems a bit higher to the circumstances. All right, we'll make it three dollars a week. Three dollars. Oh, there's the doorbell. Well, let's call it a deal. Good night, Colonel. But, uh, let's see. Uh, a week for rent. Uh, for breakfast. <laughs> Oh, this is a nice surprise. I kind of thought I'd like to run down and see how you all was getting along. 
just about the way you predicted. <laughs> we miss you, Fidelia. Now, you just give me that apron right off and let Fidelia finish whatever it is you're doing. Nothing of the kind. You must be tired. Now, come and sit down. Child, would you mind running along? I got some trouble that I want to unburden on to your mother, kind of private life. You go on upstairs, dear. Yes, and I'll come up and tuck you in. All right. Oh, and Mother, remind me to tell you about the momento steel I just made. All right, honey. Come and sit here, Fidelia. Yes, and thank you. Well, you see, Miss Hilton, it's this way. Them uptown folks is all right in their way, but it's that lazy trash they got working for them. Miss Hilton, I just want to vote in the same quarters with them. No, ma'am. When I finish my work, I want my solitude and I want my privatization. Fidelia, I'd do anything if I could only have you back, but things aren't any better. Yes, my nose. Miss Hilton, your bills is running awful high. Mm, high isn't the word for it. But how do you know? Well, I hope she won't think I'm butting in, but I've been keeping in mighty close touch, and, and when I heard tell this afternoon about that Colonel Smellett, and here I'm making all that easy money, and I reflect maybe you wouldn't mind renting me my old room. Oh, oh, now you know I'd never take any money from you. That room was always yours, and it always will be. I kind of feared you wouldn't take my money, so I've got it all figured out. I can work here on my days off and nights, too. You know, Miss Hilton, I'm just strong as a horse. And... Oh, no. You're not as young as you used to be. And you're not going to do any work for us. Well, it'll be wonderful for the children and me just to have you in the house. Miss Hilton, it's the most beautiful thing I ever heard anybody say in all my born days. If you don't mind, I'll just go get my bag. Oh, you shouldn't bother going all the way back for it tonight. It ain't no bother, Miss Hilton. It's a sitting right here. This whole moral breakdown is being caused by drinking and nothing else. They certainly serve rotten scotch at this bar. Pay as you go with what? That's what I want to know. The one I was with sure was a dope. Why, he didn't know where he'd been or where he was going or anything. I haven't got anything against red fingernails, but it's carrying it too far when they paint up their toes. I bought six dozen islands before the hoarders got there. I can't write him everything the baby says on one of those little V-mail forms. Oh. Emily, let's not go to the bar. I could use a oh, drink, nonsense. but... Oh, nonsense. Don't be so old-fashioned. Uh, will you let us through, please? I've been here 20 minutes and... Oh, of course. Go right ahead. <laughs> Just leaving anyway. Well, he's rather nice-looking, don't you think? Still have your weather eye out, Emily? Well, there are compensations for being a divorcee, you know. A bartender? Let's see. And what do you imagine you'd like? Oh, anything at all. You order for me. You make a good panda's punch? I'll make them, lady. And if you don't like them, you don't need to drink them. All right, then two. With light rum. Oh, I knew I had something to talk to you about. That vicious tongue, Vivian Robinson. You know the one with the bad skin? Mm -hmm. Is going around saying you've taken in a rumor. I've tried to tell it must be a relative or something. No, that's the truth. I've taken a rumor. We need the money. Well, all I can say is that if things are that bad, Tim Hilton had no business going into the army. To be honest, I don't understand it myself, but I knew that Tim was miserable from the start not being in it. All these irresponsible 40-year-old fathers dashing off into uniform. Tim. Ah, oh, does it always have to be Tim? Oh, Tony. Yes, the eternal also ran. What on earth are you... Emily, do you know Lieutenant Willett, Mrs. Hawkins? I've never had the pleasure, but I've always had a soft spot for Navy men. How do you do? Well, my pretty, I didn't know you turned into a bar fly. I've been trying to get you on the phone all afternoon to tell you that your old lover was back in town. Shh, not a word of it. Do you want the whole town to know? Well, if you want to be hypocritical about it. I heard that Tim had been shipped out of town, so I went to the Admiral and convinced him that I'd practically charted the Great Lakes. Oh, fine. Well, how long are we going to be honored with your presence around these parts? Just long enough to get ready for a shakedown cruise, but... If you're not stubborn, that ought to give me all the time I need. Uh, don't you think so, Mrs. Hawkins? I really don't know, I'm sure. Oh, Emily, I think you believe him. Oh, I can't say I'd blame you much. Now, you're what I call a discerning woman. <laughs> Tony's our oldest friend. He was Tim's best man. Come on, come on. We can give Mrs. Hawkins the vital statistics some other time. Let's get out of here. I need more privacy. But I haven't even touched my drink. Oh, that's all right, dear. We can get another one. Oh, don't let us rush you, Mrs. Hawkins. Uh, 
Goodbye. Oh, what about the check? Don't bother, Lieutenant. I'll take care of it. That's fine. But, Tony, uh, goodbye, Emily. That was a terribly rude thing to do to poor Emily. Oh, poor Emily, my foot. Do you know of any oh, place in this gay metropolis where I can conquer my two passions at the same time? Oh, so you've been leading me on. There is someone on the lakes beside me. Don't be silly. I'm talking about you. You're in a nice, thick steak. <laughs> The white fish, senor, is simply delicious. Grilled, blunt, maybe like it. Two steaks thick. Um, uh, lobster creole, speciality of the house, Two senor. steaks thick. I must tell you the truth, Commodore. We are fresh out of steak since last Tuesday. This is a steakhouse. Look, it says right here. Thick Kansas City steak. I can't help it, senor. There is There's a, a war, war on, on, you know. know. Yes, I found that out. All right, bring us whatever you have. Anything but hash. Bravo, senor. You will be very happy. You will see. What are you looking so depressed about? Oh, my life is an endless series of disappointments. No steak, nobody loves me. You wouldn't think so if you'd heard the kids just now when I told them you were in town. I can't figure out just what special charm you have for them. It's just that they have better taste than their mother. <laughs> if you ask me, I think they believe you're some kind of genius. Those cover girls you used to paint for romantic tales really gave you glamour in their eyes. Oh, gone are the days. Still, you know, Anne, there is a certain similarity between a beautiful woman and a battleship. Mm -hmm. It must be, or else why would you be so interested in battleships? You got me wrong, Anne. As far as I'm concerned, there never was a beautiful woman but you. Oh. Ever since that summer, the whole crowd of us went up to the Thousand Islands. And I first saw you standing on that little yawl. Had on that white bathing suit, remember? With your hair blowing in the wind. What, Tony Willett? When did you get back? Oh, uh, hello, sugar. Give me a ring, huh? Yeah, 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 yes, I, I will, I, I will. <clears throat> we were in the Thousand Islands with my hair blowing in the wind, remember? Uh, really, Anne, I, I was nobody at all, just a girl I happened to meet the last time I was in town. Oh, Tony, you don't have to apologize to me. I'd be disappointed if you ever changed. Look, when we get home, I'll show you something I brought back just to prove what to you. What do you mean, when we get home? Just what I said, certainly you mean to put me up, don't you? Probably can't get a room anyplace else. I understand the hotels are jammed. Oh, why do these things always happen to me? I don't see why it should be any hardship to you. Tim's away, you ought to have plenty of room. What do you think you're going to do, share my room? The girls can double up. The girls have already doubled up. We have a lodger. A lodger? What Yes, do... no, don't start. No, I had enough of it from Emily. We needed the money. Well, why don't you get a job? You look perfectly able-bodied to me, if I may use the word body. What on earth could I do? Well, you could do plenty of things if you really wanted to. You could. Let's give it. I don't want to hear a serious word out of either of us until I leave this town. Oh, Tony, it's so good to see you. You know, next to Tim being home on leave, it's the nicest thing. There that's you go been. again. Here I buy you a beautiful dinner, and what thanks do I get? Tim, Tim, what's that? Speciality of the house, chicken hash. Well, blow me down. <laughs> I think Uncle Tony must be the most distinguished-looking officer in the whole Navy. Admiral King's not so bad. I mean, young officer, silly. Well, you'd better finish your homework and stop mooning around. <laughs> the governor said to the Admiral, 16-inch guns. Land sakes, can't they shoot any further than that? Oh, Tony. <laughs> Uncle Tony! Jane! What's the matter? You don't seem very glad to see me. But I am. I am. Honestly, I am. Uncle Tony! Brig! Now, that's what I call a real reception. Uncle Tony, you're not staying with us. Oh, yes, he's staying with us. And don't go spoiling him. We're going to have enough trouble with him as it is. <laughs> oh, Uncle Tony, couldn't be any trouble. It's just wonderful having him here. That's right, Jane. Don't listen to your mother. I'm counting on you girls spoiling me plenty. <laughs> There's just one thing, please. Do you think you and Brig could cut out that uncle stuff? I'm not your uncle, and it makes me feel 108. Do you mean we're going to have to call you Lieutenant Willett? Tony to you, Miss Hilton. What on earth? Oh, that must be the taxi driver with that mysterious object you lugged along. You won't be so indifferent when you see what it is. I don't know what this thing is, but it could be the side of a house, I suppose. These are funny times. Uh, I ain't got no change. Don't worry about it. I borrowed it myself. Ah, thanks, Captain. Thanks a lot. Say, lady, mm -hmm. sure must be nice having your husband home again. Well, well he's not... <laughs> <laughs> what 
What's so funny about that? Imagine anybody taking you for Pop. You think your Pop's wonderful, don't you? Well, he is. Sure he is, but you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> I'll take your bags upstairs. Tony? Oh, don't bother, Jay. And I'll... Oh, I don't mind, really. I'd love to. Brig, you take one, too. After all, if we don't give the lieutenant some real service, he might decide not to stay here. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Carry on, mates. <laughs> Oh, put them in Briggs' room. I'll move in with you girls. Oh, that'll be fun. Fun indeed. I thought I was through with dormitories. You ought to be very happy about it. You'll get to know your children better. Who's that? Is there something gone bad, Miss Hilton? <laughs> I wouldn't call it anything good. Well, if it is my old girlfriend, Fidelia. Is that Mr. Tony Willett? I thought we was through with you till the duration was over. Uh, Lieutenant Willett's going to be our guest for a while. Happy surprise, Fidelia? I don't know about that happy part. Miss Hilton, don't you go let these people turn your pretty home into no boarding house. But Fidelia, I've half a mind not to stay. But the other half tells me to forgive you. What's that? Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, may as well have the unveiling right now. <laughs> Wait a minute, Tony. I want to see, too. All right. Well, let's have a little light on it. I offered it to the Navy. Oh, Tony, I am flattered. That's mighty nice. Oh, Mother's just like you, and so pretty. <laughs> well, it's really not much. I heard they needed some new recruiting posters for the waves, and I figured that your face was the one that would... Tony Willett, I might have known. Mr. Willett, you cover that thing right up this here minute. Jane, use no business looking at that. Tony, the Navy Department didn't accept it. No, I never even found out why. I just got the painting back, and the next thing I knew, I was on sea duty. Red tape, I guess. I hope you're having enough trouble. I wouldn't wish this on a Jap, but give it a little push, Jane. All right, Tony. Oh, oh, oh. Nice going, Jane. Oh, Tony, I'm so sorry. Never mind, Jane. I'm sure your mother put you up to it. Oh, no, honestly, Tony. Which way do I take this thing? Here, stop it on the port side. Here, I'll help you. How are you going to get the bed in here? How am I going to what? No, no, don't worry. We'll put the mattress on the floor for tonight. Yes, Tony, don't worry. I love to sleep on the floor. Come on. Oh, good evening, Colonel Smollett. I do hope you won't mind not taking one of the mattresses out of your room. Well, not at all. One mattress is entirely sufficient. Uh, Tony, uh, Colonel Smollett, may I present an old friend of ours, Lieutenant Willett. How are you, Colonel Smollett? How do you do? Uh, I take it your commission is in the Navy. That's right, sir. Hmm, doesn't surprise me. Oh, we'll get the bedstead out in the morning, Colonel. You see, we need the extra mattress tonight. I'm moving in with oh, the girl. Oh, it's quite all right. I assume that you're taking the one that I have not been using. Oh, of course. That's fine. Something wrong with one of the beds? There's nothing wrong with the bed. It's just that monstrous animal that seems to be so attached to it. Good night. Yes, Jane. Mother, do you think I have a nice figure? Yes, darling. You have a beautiful figure. Do you think Tony might paint me someday? Over my dead body. Wet took it. Wet took it. You must have the name wrong. No, here it is in Pop's letter. And we're here in Texas on maneuvers. In a little town called Wet Took It. We came, we saw, we took it. We took it. Very funny. I would appreciate it, my dear Bridget, if in the future you could spare me from your father's elaborate puns. And if, uh, 
I suppose to some people that creature comes under the heading of pets. I beg your pardon, Colonel Small. There's someone here to see you. Your grandson. William? Hello, Grandpa. What peculiar combination of circumstances do I owe this visit, William? <clears throat> well, you see, uh, I was transferred out here to Chamberlain Field, and, and I found out at your office... Indeed? That... I wasn't even aware that the United States forces had been honored by your membership. I enlisted, sir, last summer. So? I don't think we need trouble these young women with your autobiography. Let's go into the living room, if you will. Excuse me. I presume you come to me for help of one sort or another with your tail between your legs. Well, no, sir. I, I thought you might like... Well, you see... Or is it money that you're after? Speak up, boy. I thought you might like to see me. A very mistaken notion, if ever you had one. And you've had plenty, as we're both well aware. After all, I thought that we may not see one another again. I don't know when I'll be shipped out. Come, William. Let's not dramatize these things. There's no need for any pretense of affection between us. You've paid your courtesy call. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. You may drop me a line with your address. And if you have any affairs that require attention, I shall have my lawyers look after them for your late father's sake. Now I'm sure you'll excuse me. I'm a bit tired. Goodbye, Grandpa. What do you suppose? I'm going in and speak to him. Mr. Smollett. Oh. I'm Jane Hilton. This is our home. Oh, I see. I, I'm glad to meet you. I hope you like the army. That is, I mean, are you on leave? Well, just for the day. I, I'll be at Chamberlain for a while, I suppose, until we're shipped. Oh, that'll be nice. Oh, I don't mean about you being shipped. Oh, I, I didn't mean that either. I, I hope you don't think I'm a murderer or something. Grandfather just doesn't like me. Well, I don't think it's right. I think it's just terrible of him. Oh, he's not so bad. He has good reasons, I guess, the way he looks at it. I've kind of disappointed him. Well, I don't care what you did. You're a soldier now. And you enlisted, too. I heard you say so. Oh, I'm afraid that isn't really so very much. Lots of men enlisted. But it's awfully nice of you to talk to me this way. Hi, Brady. What's the matter with the Colonel? He's storming around his room like one of the Smith brothers with a hot foot. I, I think I'll go up to my room and do some homework. Oh, hello. Oh, Uncle. I mean, Tony. Lieutenant Willett, this is Private William Small. How are you? How do you do, sir? Corporal. Engineers, isn't it? Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Oh, sorry. You're related to the Colonel, I take it. I'm his grandson, but uh, I don't know, sir, whether he... Think can... nothing of it. I cut my grandfather off without a cent. Oh. Well, Jane, what's the program for this afternoon? How about you and Brig taking me out on the town? William here could... Uh, what did they call you, Bill? Could make a fourth. Oh, that's nice of you, Lieutenant, but I couldn't. Uh, and besides, if you'll forgive my saying so, sir, you're an officer... You know, I forgot all about that. You're right. Well, we could... Uh, well, let's see, uh, Jane, what could we do? Oh, anything you say, Tony. Oh, well, uh... We could have tea in the garden. Well, that's fine. We could play some darts, maybe. Uh... Well, thank you, sir, but I ought to be getting back to the field. You've both been very nice. Next time you're in town, perhaps. Will you be off next Sunday? How about it, Jane? Oh, that would be lovely. Oh, well, I'll look forward to it. Uh, well, I better be going. Goodbye, Miss Hilton. Goodbye. It's nice to know you. So long. Goodbye. And thanks for coming to the Navy. Oh, thanks. Thank you, sir. I will. Uh -huh. oh, well, goodbye. That seems like a very nice boy. Yes, he is a nice boy, but... Now, Jane. 
You take the word of your old Uncle Tony and be kind to that boy the next time he comes here. Well, he's nice enough, but... But what? Well, he's so young. Besides, he isn't even an officer. Why, Jane, I'm surprised at you. Those are the boys who do the fighting. And largely for their dreams of girls like you. Far be it for me to run down officers. You go right on advertising us, Jane. Every little bit helps. Oh, Tony, I wish... What do you wish, little Janie? I wish... I wish I were 27. Now, that's a coincidence. So do I. Where's that break? Do you suppose she ran out on us? Let's go find her. I've got a nickel bet with her on 20 questions. <laughs> Why, but you're strong, Lieutenant. Here, men, help the young lady. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Mrs. Hawkins, I'm so frightened. There's nothing to be frightened of. You just go on in and dance. Is this here vehicle got Susie Fleming aboard? But a boy named Swenson was supposed to meet me here. I'm Swenson. I'm just go into the cloakroom and they'll give you your name. Hi, Becky. Oh, it's just like a great big prom, isn't it? <laughs> Mind you, Becky, dear. I'll leave a few boys for the other girls. Miss Hilton! Miss Hilton! Come on, Jane. Don't dawdle. Will you be sure and tell me when Mother and Lieutenant will arrive? Don't worry. Oh. Well, just look for me at the committee table and I'll help you find Oh, hello, Miss Hilton. May I have your first dance? Well, I really don't know what arrangements have been made. I just can't figure out what could have happened to Susie Fleming. Jumped over the top head. That's the way the gypsy noodle works. When you think that you're crazy, you're the victim of the gypsy noodle. But it's not your mind that's crazy. I don't know you very well, but all right, Bill. Hello, Emily. Hello, Ed. Hello, Lieutenant Willett. I'm simply delighted you could come to our little party. Hello. I practically had to tie him up with rope and drag him. He was afraid there wouldn't be another officer here. Oh, there are a few. My dear, you should see Captain Higgs, that profile. Say Jolie. <laughs> but I do believe you're the only naval man in the place. Well, isn't that just fine? I'll bet they give me three chairs and a long periscope. <laughs> You'll have a good time. You can see. I suppose uh, your first dance is with Anne, but remember, the second is mine. Well, that's too <laughs> kind of you, Mrs. Hawkins. Now, if only I didn't have this uh, Charlie horse. Oh, naturally, if you're indisposed. You see, Emily, I promised Tony he wouldn't have to stay long. If you'll excuse me, I have a number of things to take care of. Oh, Emily, would you keep an eye on Jane after we leave? Why, well, certainly, my dear. I'll devote the entire evening to her. Well, of all the phony battle axes I've ever met. Now, really, Tony, you asked for that. Well, what am I doing here with all these kids anyway? Why, Tony, will it? When on earth did you get back in town? Oh, uh, hello, sugar. Give me a ring sometime when you're on the loose. Yeah, yeah. As I was saying, uh, what am I doing here with all these kids, anyway? That was a cute kid, too. Oh, really, Anne, it's just a girl I went to college with. <laughs> well, <Wild> bit. <laughs> Mrs. Hilton. Oh, oh, Mrs. Hilton. Yes? I'm Johnny Mahoney. I oh, hope... Johnny, of course. How are you? Lieutenant Willett, this is Johnny Mahoney. How are you? How do you do, sir? Your father told me you were stationed out here. Oh, I'm afraid Dad bores everybody talking about me. Not at all. He has every right to brag about you. Well, I don't know about that, Mrs. Hilton. 
I wanted to write and thank you for what you said about Mr. Hilton helping me after the war. Well, I thought maybe you might think I was taking advantage. I didn't want you to feel you were under any obligation. Oh, well, there's no obligation, Johnny. Anybody who gets you will be very lucky. Well, I'm afraid the luck's all mine, but, and that's the way it's been my whole life. Well, I guess I have to be leaving now. So soon? I thought the dance was just getting underway. I only stopped in to pick up my gunner. I'm taking off in a few minutes. It's just a routine flight, you know. Oh, I see. Well, good night, Johnny. Good night, Mrs. Hilton. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night. Those kids just break my heart. They're so, so eager. I know. They expect to come back to something. What do you mean, Tony? Oh, I mean, uh, something like they left. Only better. Hope they don't get too many surprises. Hello, Mother. Oh, Bill. Oh, good evening, sir. Hello, Tony. Hi, Janie. Oh, Mother, I don't believe you've met Bill Smollett, have you? How do you do? I'm so sorry I missed you at the house the other day. Oh, thank you, Miss Hilton. Your, your daughter has been very nice to me. Well, that's good. <laughs> now, you children run along and have a good time. We'll be leaving soon. Oh, oh, Tony, aren't you going to dance with me even once? Well, I... Uh... Oh, go ahead, Tony. very much, Mrs. Hilton. Uh, would you rather we uh, stop? Now, Bill, you invited me to dance, and you're going to see it through, whether you like it or not. Oh, well, of course, Mrs. Hilton. I'm only too happy. <laughs> well, I think travel broadens oneself. Don't you think so? Hope so. I'll be doing plenty of it. Do you think the artistic life is too bohemian? Indeed, I do. And look what happened to Bohemia. Oh. Did you lose something? Yes, ma'am. Susie Fleming. And I'm beginning to get right worried about her. I love modern American painting, don't you? You're the true American art, darling. Uh, Tony, nobody else ever says things like you. Hey! Oh, oh I'm so oh. sorry, sir. It's my fault now to watch where I'm going. It's all right, Lieutenant. We know you didn't mean it. <laughs> oh, it's over. And very nice it was, too. Find Mother and Tony. What do you think you're doing anyway? I don't know, babe. I ain't used to dancing. I'm used to pushing a plow. You're not kidding. Hmm. I bet Emily put some vinegar in this. You know, if you're not careful, I'll think you don't like Emily. I'll tell you this much. As soon as we leave here, you're going to buy me a drink. That's the least I'm entitled to, after. Why, hello, Tony. I didn't know you were in town. Hello, Sam. It's quite a dance you fellows are putting on here. What's the matter? You look upset. Just got some bad news. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Good Hilton. evening, Major. Plane crash. Uh, don't say anything about it now. It might spoil the fun. Oh, that's too bad. Where did it happen? Right outside town. Lost one of my best boys. What was his name? Mahoney. He hit some wires. Oh, not Johnny. Did you know him? Well, I hope he wasn't, uh... But it can't be. We were talking to him here just a little while ago. I'm extremely sorry, Mrs. Hilton. I, I had no idea that you knew him. I shouldn't have said anything. It's just that I, I like Johnny very much. I know his father. Terrible thing. 
Beg your pardon, sir. The car's ready for you now, sir. Be right there. Yes, sir. I've got to go and examine the wreck. Not a very pleasant job, I can tell you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Tony. Sorry, Sam. Oh, Tony, how awful. His poor parents. Lucky Johnny. Come on, Ann. Let's dance. Dance? Look, Ann, you'll be hearing plenty of things like this. Might as well get used to them now. Oh, I feel so good. Don't you feel good? Well, now, my Susie, she's what I'd call a one-man woman. I love to read books. They're so significant. Why do they call you woman? Is that your nickname? <laughs> As I remember, you and Tim drove everybody crazy wherever you went, having them play the thing over and over again. Tim. Whistle something else. I thought that was your favorite, next to Rock of Ages, of course. Don't joke. All right, have it your way. No jokes. What is your pleasure? Oh, I'm sorry. You said you wanted a drink. Let's go someplace. You feel like it? Sure, I do. Honest? No, frankly, I don't feel much like it. Neither do I. It's pleasant being in a car again, isn't it? Yes, we used to take everything so for granted. Now I feel like a king just because I can rent one for a week. Uh-oh. Yep. It's one of them, all right. What have we been doing? You weren't speeding. Things changed around here. Do you have to be doing something now before you get a ticket? Where do you think you're going? I wish I knew. What's your guess? Gibraltar, New Guinea, Kiska? Your station around here? Well, yes and no. Look, officer, I don't want to be rude, but we're not in a very chatty frame of mind, so would you mind filling out one of those pretty little slips and getting it over with? You weren't doing anything. I wasn't. Well, what's all this about? Oh, it's just that it gets so lonely along this road since gas rationing. And say, ain't it a beautiful night? Well, I hadn't noticed it before, but now that you mentioned it, officer... Well, guess I better be checking in. Nice to meet up with you folks. Thanks. Good night. Get one of them Japs for me. But lay my hands on one, I'll give him a ticket. <laughs> I suppose he's what Brig would call a character. I don't know what you'd call him, but he can have my vote. Do you realize we are laughing? Well, well, so we are. What do you know? Oh, Anne, Anne. What, Tony? Sometimes I wish... How'd you like a cigarette? Well, as a matter of fact, I'd love one. I don't believe I've had a cigarette in a month. I must say, I've never had such a dramatic build-up to a cigarette before. You know what I was just thinking? I like you best when you're not thinking. That's right, run me down. Tony Willett, the jolly fellow. Always good for a laugh. Oh, now, you're not really going to be wounded. Not by me, of all people. No. If you haven't wounded me by now, I guess I'm impervious, Anne. But I would like to tell you what I was thinking. All right, what were you thinking? I was just thinking what fun it would be sometimes to be a good, heavy, synthetic rubber heel. It would be synthetic, Tony.
it all right now if I whistle together? Go right ahead. I'd like to join in. I just can't believe that by tomorrow, Tony will be gone. There are enough carrots here to feed a cavalry regiment, men and horses. I guess next to Pop, Tony must be the nicest man in the world. Bridget, please. What, Colonel? If you'll excuse me, I've had enough this morning. In fact, I think that henceforth, you may operate this victory garden entirely by yourself. But, golly, what did I do? But since you're so obtuse, Tony, Tony, Uncle Tony, I suppose I'd better look for quarters elsewhere, since that's the way I'm regarded around here. Oh, oh Colonel Smalley, I wouldn't hurt your feelings for anything. And it's not a question of my feelings. After all, a man does have his pride. Oh, there's the postman. Maybe it's a letter from Pop. Oh, you'll wait here, won't you? About. It's a letter to Jane and me from Pop. Well, bring it up. Come on, honey. Time to get up. Uh, Mother, listen. Pop says he may get a leave soon. Isn't that wonderful? Let me see. Jane, Jane. What's that about Pop? Mother. Yes? Look. Hmm? Jane, let me look at you. What's the matter? Oh, darling, I'm afraid you have the mumps. Mumps? Mumps? Oh, Mother. Tony's last day. Oh, don't we children have mumps? Oh. <laughs> you sure you ain't leaving nothing here, Mr. Willett? Just my love, Fidelia. Why, you afraid maybe I'll come back? I ain't sorry you're going, I can tell you that. Now, Fidelia, I always say nice things about you. I ain't got no time for them complimentaries, Mr. Willett. And besides, now that Miss Jane done gone and got herself some mumps, we need this room bad for Miss Hilton and Bray. Well, at least give me credit for good timing. Hey, here, don't bother with that. I'll take it down. I want to be sure it gets down. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. I've got a going away present for you, Fidelia. Huh? Here it is. And always remember, a great master devoted some of his last hours to you before he went off to the wars. You like it? I tried not to flatter you. Why, Mr. Willie, it's... It's just the way I always wanted to look. Someday I'll do you an oil. Holy smokes, I haven't too much time. I want to say goodbye to everybody. You just run along and say your farewells. I'll toot your bag downstairs for you. That's very nice of you. Mr. Willis, I must have been blind. Just stone blind not to see what a lovely gentleman you is. Leaving, Lieutenant? On my way, Colonel. I'll tell Miss Hilton you're ready, Mr. Tony. Thank you, Fidelia. Rather envy you, if I may say so. We could use you, sir. In the Navy? Uh, good luck, Mr. Willard. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I guess we have to have a navy. Eh? Jane? Tony, you are coming in, please. Don't you want to say goodbye? I have an awful disease. Can't scare me. I'm coming in. Oh, Tony. Wait a minute, Tony, please. All right, Jane? Yes? Well, I wish you wouldn't. Hello, Janie. Hello, Tony. You look fine in that kerchief. Probably start a new fashion. Terrible. Oh, no, you don't. You can never look terrible. You're pretty, that's what you are. Don't laugh at me. I never laugh at anybody I love. <sighs> and I've loved you from the moment you were born. Oh, is that all? 
It's the best love I have, Janie. It's a special kind of love I keep just for Ann and Tim and the two sweet girls who are part of Ann and Tim. Tony, you're going away and maybe you'll be killed and I've got the mumps just like a baby. I hope the mumps are the worst things that ever happened to you your whole life long. And I won't be killed. Only the good die young, haven't you heard? Then I'm neither good nor young. But, Tony, you're just the right age for a man. Little Janie. Want to make a bet? What? I'll bet you that by the time I see you again, you're in love. Oh, you're silly. You're the silliest man I ever knew. Now you're making sense. I always knew you had a good head on your shoulders. Will you write to me? There won't be anything to write. There won't be anything to happen after you're gone. Ever. All right. But I'll write to you. I have to go now, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, Janie. Goodbye, Tony. I'll write to you. I'll write to you all the time. Catch the mumps. What's the matter? Do you want to keep them all to yourself? Besides, I'm no hero. I've had the mumps. I'm immune. Oh, Tony. I wish. I wish. Let me wish this time. I wish that I were 17. Oh, Tony. sitting right there in that holy of holies just as though it were yours. I'm getting it used to being just another chair. May I wake her up? You'd better. She'd never forgive you if you left without saying goodbye. If ever I have any children, God will punish me. They'll be boys. I couldn't possibly have anything as nice as that. The first step usually is to get married. Uh-huh. You leaving soon, Tony? Just a little while. Say goodbye to Tony, darling. It's way past your bedtime. I want to talk to him a few minutes before he leaves. Goodbye, Tony. Goodbye, big dear. It's sort of like saying goodbye to Pop again. Coming from you, Brig, that's the compliment that top all compliments. I'll have another kiss on that. Your cab's here, Mr. Tony. Thank you, Fidelia. Would you ask him if he'd mind waiting a few minutes? I got it all arranged. He's awaiting Miss Elton. Goodbye, Tony. Come back soon. Good night, Mother. Good night, darling. Don't you go catching those mumps. What do you think I am? A child. Happy dreams. Happy landing. Goodbye, Mr. Tony. Goodbye, Fidelia. I'll take myself along now before I... Just when did you captivate Fidelia? It was my brilliant art that did the trick. I sketched her. As a wave? And sometimes your ingratitude saddens me. You'll recover. I've got to leave here just three minutes flat. Tony, I'm so sorry to see you go. We've all loved having you. By the way, how did you leave Jane? With the mumps. And with tears, I'm afraid. I haven't much tact, I guess. I, I didn't know what to say. I know. <laughs> Poor kid. Then you are very attractive, Tony. A bone from Mrs. Hilton. No, I mean it. It won't be too easy for Jane getting over it. Oh, nonsense. Older men, every girl goes through it, didn't you? Still going through it. Yeah. Older men named Hilton. Don't you ever worry about Jane? I won't, as long as the older men are like you. 
You know something, Ann? I'm chump enough to go on living on your compliments for the next six months. Like a camel in water, you know. How long can they go? I can't tell you. I never knew one. Tony, don't tell me any secrets, but is it action this time? I guess so, down to St. Lawrence, and then just when I don't even know myself. I won't say what I feel. No, don't. You better get some rest. You look tired. I will. I have a little letter writing to do first, though. I see. How often do you write him? You won't think me foolish if I tell you. Huh. I try to write at least a few lines every night. You know, that's a little nuts. It's pretty wonderful, too. Well, good night, Anne. Good night, you see. I'll come here. You're a swell guy, Tony. Oh, go away. No use, Bill. I'll never learn. Oh, sure you will. I hurt my thumb. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me see. Ha, ha, ha. It's your turn now, Bill. Let's see if you can knock them all down. Well, I don't know about that. Piece of tape. Oh, thank you. It's your turn now, Jane. Oh, I was just. He just gave me a piece of tape. Hi, buddy. Hi. Have a smoke? No. And I'd advise you to mind your own business. I know she's a nice girl. Anybody could see that. And what's more, I don't like your laughing either. Bill, please come down and show me again how to do it. Look, buddy. You can have a fight if you want it. But I was just trying to be friendly. Well, well, all right then. Bill, Bill, speak to me. Gee, I'm sorry. You ought to be. Look what you've done. Me? I didn't do anything. Uh, I guess that'll teach him. You know, I've never been to the beach in my whole life. I've never seen the ocean. You haven't? I never saw it till a couple of months ago. But you're a sailor. I was brought up on a farm. Oh, I see. I've never been on a farm. You haven't? I was brought up on an army post. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I have to catch a train. Got to be back at the base in the morning. Sure wish you could spend the rest of the evening with us. Oh, no, you don't. 
I butted in enough already. No, we loved meeting you, didn't we, Bill? Sure we did. I'll catch a bus here. So long, buddy. Goodbye. You've both been swell. You're the only people I've met since I came to town. Well, why didn't you go to the canteen? Oh, they're so crowded and everything, and I don't dance so very good. You and me both. Next time you come to town, maybe we can all go bowling again. Gee, I don't know if I'll ever be back this way. And I expect we'll get going any day now. War looks pretty good, doesn't it? Sure does. Well, goodbye, miss. My name's Harold E. Smith. Well, I'm uh, Bill Smollett, and this is Miss Hilton. How are you? Jane's my first name. Goodbye, Jane. Goodbye. Bye, Harold. Hal. Oh, goodbye, Hal. He's nice. Yeah, he's a nice fella. You were sweet to him, Bill. And I'm sorry oh, about... Oh, I acted like a fool. He's, uh... He's good-looking, isn't he? Is he? I hadn't noticed. You must have noticed. Well, I didn't. Come on, let's get a soda. No chocolate. We only have vanilla flavoring left and no ice cream. Would you like to try our victory punch? What's that? Oh, it's sort of a loganberry phosphate with lime. Oh, that sounds fine. We'll make it too. All right. But you could have a vanilla soda without any ice cream, maybe. Oh, that's right. I could, couldn't I? All right, I'll try that. OK, one victory, one vanilla soda with no ice cream. You mind if I smoke? Of course not. Bill, you know, why are you so, so timid about things? What do you mean, Jane? Oh, I mean about asking if you can smoke and... Well, nobody else does that, and, well, I mean everything. Is it... I hope you won't think I'm being forward, but... Is it something to do with your grandfather? No, it isn't that. Although I suppose I've always been sort of scared of Grandpa. But why? Well, I... I dug up a scoop of vanilla ice cream for you. Oh, thank you. Please pay the cashier and buy worth ass with your change. Thanks, I will. You see, my father was a soldier. He was a colonel when he died. I guess all the Smollett's all the way back were soldiers. One of them was with Washington at Yorktown. Although, sometimes I think Grandpa just made that one up. I'm sure he didn't. You ought to be awfully proud. Oh, I'm proud, all right. But, uh, something went wrong with me. Mother uh, died when I was born, so I never knew her. Oh, of course, I never knew her. That's a shame. She could paint pretty well, china and things. I hope I can show you her work sometime. That is, if, if Grandpa... If Grandpa what? Well, if I go home. You see, I haven't lived home since West Point. West Point? Oh, look, Jane, you don't want to hear all about this, do you? Not if you don't want me to, Bill. Oh, but I do, of course. There's no one in the whole world that I'd rather explain... that I'd rather tell. Isn't your soda all right? Oh, yeah, I... Uh, I just don't feel much like it. Uh, I thought I did, but... You don't have to drink it, Bill. Would you rather go home and talk? We could sit on the porch. Oh, swell. I'd like that. Soda. Now we can relax. 
You were talking about how your grandfather always wanted you to be a soldier. Um, would you like a sandwich or something? He wanted me to be a general. But didn't you want to be a general? Well, no, I didn't. But why not, Bill? I... I had an idea it was more important to build things. But I don't mean it isn't terribly important being a soldier. I don't know how we could keep the things we build without them. Of course. But you said you went to West Point. I should think you'd be a lot more than a... More than a corporal, you mean? Let's have a picnic sometime. I'll bring a... Bill, I didn't mean that. It's wonderful being a corporal. No, you meant that if I went to the academy, I ought to be more than a corporal. Well, you might as well know it. I... I was kicked out and I broke Grandpa's heart. Oh. I'm sure it wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. Bill, come and sit down. Grandpa's father carried this watch at Vicksburg. Grandpa gave it to me on my 10th birthday. He had it engraved for me. Read it. I'll light a match. To William G. Smollett II, who will lead men to glory on the battlefield. Oh, you must have been terribly pleased. I said, Grandpa, don't people hurt each other in war? You see, I was only ten. He took the watch away from me. But he gave it back to me again when I entered the academy. Oh, Jane, I did my best, but I could never make a good officer. I can't lead men, and I know it, so even if I led my class the way Grandpa thought Grandpa, I should... Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa. What about yourself? Why is it so important that you satisfy him, the old... Because he loved me so. Sure he did, once. But all through military school, from the time I was eight years old, I kept letting him down. I never even wanted to play with the tin soldiers he gave me. Grandpa kept telling me that if I was a small lad, I... But I guess I was always, well, you know, weak. I was sort of a joke at the academy. I only lasted a couple of months. Grandpa couldn't face his old cronies. Well, that's it. Now you can see what a mess I made out of everything. You've done no such thing. You're fine and strong, but you're just sensitive, that's all. But don't you think I'm a failure after everything I've told you? A failure? Just because you're not an officer? Why, an officer I know told me he said that you were the boys who are doing the fighting. It's Lieutenant Willett. Yes. You think a lot of him, don't you? Of course, but what's that got to do with it? You're a soldier, and I'm... That is, we're proud of you. And I hope you never get promoted. All those officers strutting around with their gold braid and everything. Gee, Jane, I'm so glad you feel that way about it. But Grandpa... Oh, bother, Grandpa! Oh, there's soda. Maybe you'd better go before we wake the colonel. He doesn't scare me. Not anymore, he doesn't. Jane, uh, let me stay long enough for just one cigarette. All right. Provided you don't ask my permission to smoke it. <laughs> I won't. half minutes, under no circumstances more than three. <sighs> Sometimes I think six minutes would be more in character. I'll serve the Colonel his breakfast this morning, Mother. See, what's wrong with you this morning, anyway? First, you get up an hour early, and... 
And then suddenly you turn into mother's little helper. Oh, I don't know. I just felt like it somehow. Not that I object. You know, the next time Brig makes a deal, she can put it into execution herself. Darling, you don't mind, do you? Waiting for our breakfast until Brig gets down. Two sets of breakfasts are about all I can handle. Mother? Mm-hmm. Mother, do you like Bill? Yes, of course. I think he's a very nice boy. A little shy, but... Did you have a nice time last night? If he's shy, it's that colonel's fault, the old goat. That's not a very nice way to talk. Well, he is. He's just ruined Bill, that's why. And I'm going to have a talk with him. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. But why not? Somebody's got to talk to him. Well, it's usually a pretty good rule to stay out of other people's business. But then maybe it's better if you learn the hard way. Go ahead if you want to. You're not a baby anymore. Just think, in another week I'll be graduating. Mm-hmm. Mother. Hmm? May I get a war job? You certainly may not. You're going to college. College? But, Mother, all the girls are talking about getting war jobs. Now, listen to me, darling. I promised your father, and I promised myself, that all the things we planned for you are going to come true, war or no war. But I want to do something. But we're doing all we can, dear. Those are the things that Pop is fighting for, so that you girls can continue. It is three minutes after seven. Mm. Here. You see what I mean? Yes. <gasps> oh, dear. Here, give him his breakfast. And tell him anything you want to. The old goat. Good morning, Colonel Smollett. Oh. Looks like a fine morning. Yes, 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 yes. Where is Superman? I beg your pardon? Pages 9 to 12, inclusive, are mysteriously missing. Where's the other one? Brick? Oh, it's a little early for her. The other egg. Oh. That's the only one we have. There's going to be sort of a shortage. <laughs> I guess the hens are busy with war work. Coffee. Colonel Smollett, do you mind being talked to at breakfast? I most certainly do mind. Oh. It's about Bill. About whom? Bill. You remember your grandson. Yes, indeed, I do remember. What about him? He's a nice boy. A most interesting observation, Miss Hilton. I'm afraid you don't understand him. He really needs you to help him, like a mother. He has an inferiority complex and... Young woman, I have handled men for 35 years and I don't think I require any instructions on the subject. Least of all, about my own grandson. Oh, I was only trying to help. He respects you so much. Then I'll thank you to do the same and to stop your intrusion in my affairs. If you only knew the first thing about psychology, you'd know better than to try to browbeat him. Colonel Smollett, Colonel Smollett, if you'd only listen. You may advise your mother that henceforth I shall have a decent breakfast downtown for 40 cents. I think you're a rude, mean, horrible old... It is now my pleasure to introduce the class president, Miss Becky Anderson. Class president, class pinup girl. I heard all about how she got elected. Oh, that's not fair, Brig. Becky's a very bright girl. She most certainly is. I should say that Becky's one of the brightest and one of the most attractive girls in this town. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. No, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, my subject for this occasion is women's place in the war. Golly. There's Pop. Oh, I see him. Where? There he is. There's Pop. I don't see him. He's in a 
G. Oh, you imagined it. Oh, honestly. Yes, Mother, really, it was Pa. Oh, why did I have to fall asleep after staying awake all through that double feature? I know what we can do, Mother. Let's wait and see it again. Quiet. Be quiet yourself. I beg you. Mr. Mahoney. Oh, good evening, Miss Hill. Sit down. I'm sorry. How are you, Mr. Mahoney? Oh, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Hello, girls. Good evening, Mr. Mahoney. City, Nebraska, turns out to greet Sergeant Tommy Blair of the Army Air Forces. Tommy, seated between his proud father and mother, joyfully receives the plaudits of his hometown. You say it's Alamo? That's right. And it's home is in the Middle West. Mm hmm And it makes a noise like a lion, but it puffs like a locomotive. Mm hmm Better give up. You agreed if you hadn't guessed it by the time we got home. Oh, I know. It's soda. Oh, no. Brick guessed that long ago. All right, I give up. It's Colonel Smollett, silly. Oh, Dick. mother. <laughs> What's that? Mother, what do we do? Is he... Is he dead? Oh, it is Bill. Oh, goodness. Bill Smollett, what were you doing there? Well, the poor boy was just guarding the house, weren't you, Bill? I guess I just dozed off. You scared us all half to death. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Won't you come in for a moment? But mind you, just for a moment, Jane has to get to bed. Mother, may Bill and I take a walk for just five minutes or so? All right, Jane, make it ten minutes. But remember, that doesn't mean an hour. Thank you, Mother. Good night, Miss Hilton, and thanks. Good night, Bill. Ah. Uh. Gee, I'm sure sorry I missed your graduation, Jane. It's not your fault you couldn't get off. Well, I would have if I could have. I know you would have. Shall we go this way? Oh, that'd be fine. Or this way. Okay. No, I think the other way's better. How are things out at the field? Oh, they're fine, thank you. How's everything with you? Oh, just fine. I want to get a war job, but Mother won't let me. Well, I think she's right. You ought to stay home. No, and... it isn't that at all. Mother wants me to go to college. Oh. Oh, gee, that'd take four years, wouldn't it? Mm, if I go. You don't want to go? No, it's so silly. If I were three or four years older, I could be a wave. Uh, or a whack. Or a nurse. That's what I'd rather be most. Nurse. Uh, that'd be swell if I was wounded. You shouldn't say such things. Oh, I won't be wounded. I'll, uh, I'll be killed. Bill. Oh, Jane, would you care? Well, of course I'd care, silly. Oh, Jane, that'd be fine. I'd be fine about it. Well, I thought that if... Well, what I mean is I would be glad if you were sorry if I were killed. What good would that do if... You were dead. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't ever want to hear you talk like that again. Okay. I'm sure sorry I missed your graduation. Jane! Well, the ten minutes aren't up yet. Jane! Jane! What's the matter? Wire from Pop. From Pop? Is he, anything wrong? He's going to be someplace for an hour between trains and wants us to meet him there. Hurry, Claire. I don't know, but hurry. Get him to get a train. Tickets, please. Did I get your ticket? Oh, yes. My daughters are back there. If we keep stopping like this, I'll miss the biggest deal of my life. Well, I'm in no hurry. I've got plenty of time from now on. Tickets, please. Oh, yes, I got yours before. My husband's never even seen the baby. Mm -hmm. Did I get your ticket? My mother has it. Oh, yeah. I think babies are just about the cutest things there are. What's his name? Dwight Eisenhower O'Brien. And after the Germans came... Ticket, please. And after the Germans came, we did not get any milk or any meat at all. I think this business of serving only two meals a day on these trains is simply outrageous. Tickets, please. 
Conductor, can't we do anything to get this train going? I wish we could, but those supply trains have the right of way. But we're going to meet my pop. He's in the army, and if this train is late, we may not see him before he leaves. But don't you think those tanks had better get through if you want him to come back? <laughs> Captain Hilton! Captain Hilton! Well, he said the lobby. Sorry, ma'am. He didn't answer the page. Well, I can't imagine. Oh, here. Yeah. What do we do? We're so late. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sorry. There's nothing available until October. I beg your pardon. Are you sure there's no message from Mrs. Hilton? I'm quite sure, but I'll look again if you'd like me to. Maybe he hasn't gotten here yet. Well, but Pop's always so dependable. Well, it wouldn't be his fault, silly. Are you sure you have the right hotel? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, yes, yes, here it is. Mrs. Timothy Hilton. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. They're all filled up. I can't help it if he is with the OVA. We missed him. I know you'll understand how heartbroken I am that my orders wouldn't permit me to wait. Kiss the kids for me. Is there something wrong, madam? What? Oh, no. No, thank you. The only address I can give you is APO number 805, care of Postmaster San Francisco. Army Post Office. But, Mother, that means we won't be seeing him before. Oh, Mother! <laughs> No, no. Sorry, no reservations until October. When I come back, we'll live the life of ease. Seems kind of tough now to say goodbye this way. But Papa's got to be rough now so that he can be sweet to you another day. Bye, 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 baby. Don't cry, baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Your Papa's off to the seven seas. I'm afraid she's awfully heavy for you. Oh, no. She's so like my granddaughter. I love holding her. Is she about the same age? No, Mary is almost 30 now. She's a nurse. Here, let me show you her picture. Oh, she's pretty. Where is she now? I really don't know. You see, she was at Corregidor. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mother, won't you let me do something now? Can I? Oh, Jane, please, darling, not again. I'm, I'm so hot and so tired. But just for the summer, Mother, I could be a nurse's aide, maybe. All right, Jane. Oh, gee, Mother, that's swell. But remember now, just for the summer. I embrace the code of a nurse's aid. I will do everything in my power to bring comfort to the ailing and the wounded of whatever color, race, or creed. I will accept no compensation and seek no reward. And I will hold as a sacred trust the symbol of mercy which I wear, the Red Cross. Tell Jane I'm proud of my little Florence Nightingale. And she must hold the thought that next summer, or the summer after that, we'll be boating again on the lake. The summer after that. And tell Brig that her candy is all the sweeter because she made it. But I'm worried about your ration points. You mustn't waste them on me. Waste them on Pop. He's thinking of us, darling. We get everything we could possibly want. And don't tell Fidelia, but the grub is wonderful. I'm gaining a pound a week. And if it doesn't stop soon, they'll have to make me a general just for appearances' sake. That's all for tonight, except... Except for what, Mother? <laughs> the rest is to me. Mother, I want to hear it. Can't I have any privacy at all? It's just for Mother, Brick, didn't you hear? Oh, you can hear it. It's not that secret, silly. That's all for tonight, except to say that come war, come jungles, 
become Japanese. They're all so easy to take. Because at the end of this, my darling, I know there waits for me. Satisfied? Do you think I'll go to my room, Mother? Oh, I thought we were all going to try out those new hairdos from Vogue tonight. Would you mind if we didn't? There's a pamphlet on I want to study on, on third degree burns. All right, darling. We can try them, Brig. I think it's high time something was done about your hair anyway. If you want to, Mother. Provided you let no, me... Now, don't start making deals with me. Well, I mean, how old do you think I could look if my hair was up? Well, let's see. I should say just about the same age. Oh, but nicer, maybe. Why? Oh, Mother, it's just terrible. My not doing anything about the war at all. It seems to me you... You've rolled bandages, you've collected salvage, and you yourself told me you've sold more war stamps than any other girl in your class. Not that that's any surprise to me. Oh, but that's all kid stuff. It's no such thing. Well, I know it's important, but... Oh, Mother, I miss Pop. Something awful. <laughs> I know, honey. So do I. Ice cream? Ice cream again? Sure wish I had some watermelon. Now you men watch Joe carefully. All it is is learning how to walk again. Thanks, kid. Hey, got any tutti fruity? Sorry. We only have vanilla. Oh, gee, we never have no tutti frutti. Wake up, Miss Hilton. Wake up. What is it? It's most time for dinner. Wake up. Oh, Fidelia. Where's Mr. Hilton? Mr. Hilton? Oh. Oh, I guess I must have been dreaming. You sure was sleeping hard. Aren't you home kind of early? Yes, I'm a little. I got no union rules for myself. Six o'clock quitting, unless I like people. <laughs> Is that for me? Oh, yes, I'm, I almost forgot. That's why I woke. <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Hilton? Oh. What is it, child? Miss Hilton!
mind if I get into bed with you? No, I don't mind. <laughs> don't let mother hear you. <laughs> Come back to us. You come back. <laughs> I've searched the Holy Scriptures and my heart for some message of comfort and inspiration to you. On other occasions, I've quoted from St. John and the prophet Zechariah. I've reminded you of the 23rd Psalm. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Today, I offer you the words of a Maryland lawyer of another day when Americans were fighting to preserve their sacred heritage of liberty. Oh, thus be it ever when free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved this nation. And conquer we must when our cause it is just, and this be our motto, in God is our trust. Now those words have become the last stanza of our national anthem. Jameson's a nice old duffer, but I don't know why we have to have all that flag waving. Well, how's everything going with you, Emily? Still having a good time, I hope. Oh, you know me. Carry on is my motto, come what may. Yes, Emily, you're one woman who can be depended upon to maintain her standards in these times. Well, thank you, dear. Hello, Mary. Hello, Anne. I was so sorry to hear about it. Thank you. I've, uh, I've been meaning to call you, Anne. Really, I have. I just heard the other day about Tim. I'm terribly sorry. Thank you, Emily. But you mustn't give up hope. C'est la guerre. By the way, that's a very cute frock you're wearing. I remember admiring it last year. No, the year before last. Really? Oh, but then, of course, you never were much interested in clothes. Well, I must run along now. Goodbye, girls. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye, Mrs. I don't like the way Jane's looking. Oh, and dear. If you run into difficulties about your food, I have a cold storage pantry all to myself, just filled with goodies. Thank you, Emily. We do beautifully on our points. Well, if everybody had my foresight, there just wouldn't be any shortages the way I look at it. Well, goodbye, dear. Give me a ring sometime. And, oh, I am so sorry about Tim, but he may turn up yet, you know. Yes, you never can tell. Goodbye, Emily. What are we going to do this afternoon? Can I see anything? Mother, can we go to the movies? How do you feel about it, Jane? That child, can't she do anything but hiss? I'll go see what she wants. There's a wonderful concert today in the park. The last of the season. Or does the idea of listening to music bore the two of you? Well, uh, the fact of the matter is... Well, yeah, I, I think a concert sounds like a good idea. Don't you think so, Jane? Well, I don't know, Bill. If you feel like some music... Or would you, by some remote chance, like to be alone with each other this afternoon? Oh, oh no, no, Mother, Mrs. honestly, oh, really? but... We thought it might be nice if we went out to the country for the mm -hmm. day. Mother, would you mind if I went over to Gladys's for lunch and stayed the afternoon? Mm, darling, no. You run along if you want to. Thanks, Mother. And see if you can teach her some semaphores. Bye, Bill. Bye, Bray. You see, Mother, Bill's leaving tonight. He's been transferred to, a, what do you call it, Bill? A staging area. Oh, Bill. I didn't know. Do you know where? Well, yes, but... Oh, of course you can't say, no. Or whether you're going to come back here. No, it'll be the last stop, I suppose. Isn't that awful, Mother? I'm sure it's what you want, isn't it, Bill? Oh, yes, ma'am. If it weren't for... Uh... May I see Bill off, Mother? You see, I don't have to go back to camp. I'm catching the Pathfinder at midnight. May I, please, even if it is late? Of course. Provided I can, too. Oh, would you, Mrs. Hilton? That's wonderful. Oh, Mother, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you almost knocked me over. Will you have supper with us? Oh, no, thank you, Bill. I have a million things to do. I'll see you at the train. So long, kids. Gee, she's nice. She's so lonely, Bill. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Having difficulties, Colonel? Uh, hello, Mrs. Hilton. Do you by any chance know where I might get some shoe polish that isn't made of old sausage? Wish I could get some sausage that isn't made of old shoe polish. Speaking of sausage, could I fix you a little cold lunch? Well, that would be very nice. Very nice indeed. I had intended going downtown as usual, but I was a bit tired. You mean you haven't had any breakfast? I know. The fact of the matter is, I don't like breakfast on Sundays. But why not? Oh, oh, I see. You mean that since you called off your deal with us for breakfast, you just sit right down over there and I'll have it ready for you in a jiffy. This is kind of you. 
I'd better clean up a bit. Why don't you do it right here? Thank you. I'm very sorry I had that little run-in with your daughter. Again? Oh, it was her fault, I'm afraid. That may be. There's no excuse for my own boorishness. Let's forget it, shall we? Salad and milk? Fine, fine, anything. Mrs. Hilton. Yes? I would like to say that I admire very much the manner in which you've taken the recent news about your husband. Well, I'm afraid that underneath I'm perhaps not quite so courageous. Then it's all the more admirable. Fortitude is easy when there is no feeling. Aren't you having something? No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Colonel, may I say something? Anything. I think it's a pity about you and Bill. He's a wonderful boy, I can tell you that. And he's so hungry for affection. He, he's like a lonely puppy. Time he got over his puppyhood, I should say. Bill's going to be a splendid man. Perhaps, perhaps. Blood may tell in the end. He's leaving tonight. Going into combat duty, I imagine. Uh, is that so? Jane and he are spending the day together. Then he's taking the Pathfinder at midnight. I have an engagement tonight. Oh, that's too bad. Your grandson's going off to war. But I don't suppose that's of any importance to you. If you'll excuse me. Mrs. Hilton. Yes? I don't want you to think that I'm any more ruthless and hard-hearted than is the case. I do have an engagement, an important one, with a British army mission that's only here for the day. Here's the wire from them. There's nothing I can do. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm sorry for Bill and for you. Perhaps I can finish in time. In which case... You'll be at the station? I'll try. I'll try my best. But if I can't, would you... Would you wish the boy luck for me? Of course I will. Oh, it'll mean a great deal to him, I know. And thank you very much for the lunch. <laughs> will you give us another chance at breakfast? On the house? Well, of course I will. Delighted, I'm sure. Good afternoon, Colonel. <laughs> Wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. Was a farmer, had a daughter, and her name was Clementine. Like she was, and like a fairy, and her shoes were number nine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. That you are, and gone forever, dreadful sorry, Clementine. I was just thinking how much fun it would be to stay out here always. Just like this. Just the two of us. Oh, Bill, if we only could. Hey, I wonder how this thing works. Uh, something up there on the tractor, I guess. I think I'll try it. Sit tight and I'll give you a ride. Oh, Bill, be careful. Oh, Bill! Bill, stop! The farmer in the dell. The farmer in the dell. Oh! The dell. Bill! The Bill! The oh, Bill! Oh, Bill! The farmer in the dell. The farmer in the dell. The farmer in the dell. Mighty old Mary, old farmer in the dell. You darn fool. Oh, Jane, I'm sorry. What happened? We 
We'd better get inside someplace before it starts to rain. Come on, Jane. Oh, boy, we certainly made that just in time. Ho, ho! How we get home if this keeps up? Must be almost 7 o'clock. Oh, what do you know? You guessed it. It's just exactly 18 minutes to 7. Only five hours more. Oh, I almost forgot for a little while. I didn't forget. Not for a minute. I thought about it all day long. Well, gee, I never thought anybody would care about me. Anybody like you. Bill. Oh, Jane, I don't want to leave you. Won't be for long, darling. Might be for months or, or years, maybe. Doesn't matter. I'll be thinking about you all the time. Someday the war will be over. Then we can be... Then we could be married, Jane. You want to be, Bill? Oh, darling. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, I just can't believe it. I just can't. I love you. Oh, I do. I, I love you. I love you. Oh, I just don't understand it. Bill, do you realize we're engaged? Engaged? Aren't you going to kiss me? There's one thing I want more than anything else in the world. And what's that? I want you and Pop to meet no one or nothing. I hope you'll like me. How could he help liking you? Billy's so sweet, so good, so handsome. Oh, handsome? Oh, I love your face. It's the cutest face I've ever seen. Cute? That's a fine thing to say to me. And you're such a baby. Look, the rain stopped. Oh, isn't that too bad? Yes. Oh, it's awful, but we better get started back. We've got to make that train now. Yeah, I guess you're right. Gee, I hope you didn't catch the flu out here in the storm. Now, don't you start worrying about me or I'll break our engagement. Oh, you have the prettiest hair. I'll bet no other nurse's aide has hair like that. Lots of them have. Prettier, too. Well, they don't have as pretty eyes, then. Prettier. Well, noses, then. Lots prettier. No, I don't believe it. Well, I'll tell you one thing they don't have. What? They don't have anybody as precious as you to take them out to the country. Come on, let's go. Precious. Cute. New York Central train number two, the Pathfinder, leaving at 12-1 for Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica, Albany, and New York on track number four. Just let me look at you, darling. This picture I'll carry with me always. Now go. And don't even look back. Look at the nice apple daddy got you. But I don't want you to go away. So it is late. Let me come up for 10 minutes. I'm sorry, Mom. I, I've only got five minutes. My furlough was canceled. I swear I can't tell any difference between it and butter. Hello. My mommy's a sergeant. No fooling. I won't forget, Bobby. What's a good excuse for being AWOL? 
this look. Got my dang nylon. Now go, honey. And don't even look back. Five months pay. Give me some war bonds. Plenty of them. Jane. What, Bill? Nothing. Just Jane. Silly. Suits me if they tax me 100%. Oh, yeah? I was just thinking. So was I. I wonder if there's some place where we can go free where we don't have to dance with hostesses. In 15 minutes, you'll be gone. I know. I'll meet you in New York. You will? And we'll get married, and I'll have a baby. Oh, boy, that sounds wonderful. We'll get married, and I'll have a baby. We'll do it the day the war's over. No, I mean tomorrow or Tuesday. Oh, gee, Jane, we couldn't do that. Yes, we could, and we will. You could, and you will what? Now, don't tell me you two are having an argument. Fine thing, I must say, ten minutes before train time. Well, you see, Mother, It doesn't I make think... any sense, Jane. Oh. What doesn't make any sense? Yeah, I have your tickets. All right, don't tell me then. Jane, would you get Bill some magazines? He doesn't need any magazines. He doesn't need any magazines. Well, then some newspapers or cigarettes or anything. But, Mother, why? Because I want to talk to Bill. Oh. I'll be finished by the time you get back, I oh, promise. All right. I'm sorry to break in on these last minutes, Bill. Well, I hope you're not worried over what we were talking about, Mrs. Hilton. I told Jane... You don't have to tell me. I wanted to talk to you about your grandfather. Oh, him. The Colonel was very upset about your leaving. I could tell. How did he know I was leaving? Did you tell him? Oh, yes. I, I hope you don't mind. Oh, it doesn't make any difference. Not to him, it doesn't. Your grandfather loves you very deeply. Well, then why wasn't he down here to see me off? I think he'll still make it. He said he was going to try, and I believe him. Well... He said if he didn't, to wish you luck. He did? Isn't there something you want me to say to him? Well, maybe you could tell him that... Uh, well, tell him that I'm a smart, all right, and... Before this thing is over, I'll... Well, I'll make him proud of me yet. Gee, that's a grandstand speech for you. No, it isn't. It's the very nicest gift you could give him. Bill, when you come back, we'll be waiting for you, all of us, the whole family. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Hilton. Uh, gee, I hope Jane doesn't bring me back any mystery magazines. I can't follow them. Oh, here she is. Have you finished now, Mother? Mm -hmm. I tried to get you some mystery magazines, but they're all sold out. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you see how lucky you are? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Never mind. Goodbye, Bill. Where are you going, Mother? I'll wait for you at the soda fountain. You two finish your argument, whatever it oh, was. Oh, we weren't arguing, Mrs. Hilton. Oh, no, well, you were giving a pretty good imitation of it. <laughs> so long. Goodbye, Mrs. Hilton. Oh, Mrs. Hilton! I hope... I mean, I know everything's gonna be all right about Mr. Hilton. Gate number two, now open for the Pathfinder, leaving at 12.01 a.m. You will marry me when it's over, won't you, Jane? You won't be mad at me because I didn't marry you now. Of course I won't be mad. But you take care of yourself. I will. You write to me. I will. You do understand, don't you? I think so. You know, it's because I wouldn't want you to be... You know, I, if anything happened to me... A widow, you mean? Yes, but not only that. If something happened, I mean, if I was... If you were wounded? Oh, Bill, I'd take care of you the rest of our lives. Always. Oh, Bill. Oh, gee, we're being silly. Maybe I'll be sent to Bermuda or someplace. I don't think so. Why, Jane? Because you're going to really show them. And you know where we'll go when we're married? Where? Right up to West Point, that's where. And you'll show them your medals. What? Better get on. Oh, I almost forgot I have something for you. You have? Oh, gee, you didn't have to do that. Here, it's my class ring. Oh, that's wonderful. You sure you don't need it? 
I don't know what's more important than it's being our engagement ring. Isn't it awful that I didn't get you a ring? But I'll send you one. It doesn't fit very well. Maybe I should have gotten you something else. Oh, no. I, I'd rather have this than anything. Well, get on, son. We're about to pull out. Hurry up, son. God. Have your picture taken as soon as you get there and send me one. I will. And don't you go getting fatter. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Oh, Jane, here, hurry. Oh, oh but it's your watch. You shouldn't. You'll need it. Goodbye, darling. Oh, Bill, I'll keep it. I'll keep it with me all the time. So long, darling. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Bill! Bill! Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, darling. I love you. I love you, darling. Bye, darling. <laughs> Finally left yet? Yes, sir. Right on time. Was a farmer had a daughter, and her name was Clementine. Light she was, and like a fairy, and her shoes were number nine. Drove she ducklings to the water every morning just at nine. Hit her foot against a splinter, fell into the foaming brine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. Dreadful sorry Clementine. Hello, Briggs. Hi, Jane. Wait for me. I'll be there in a minute. Now, Gladys, don't forget you're to go to the Jacksons and pick up those big empty paint cans they have there. I'll see you tomorrow. How are things at the hospital? Oh, fine. How's school? Oh, same old bore. Young girls should get an education. Is that so? I didn't notice you dashing off to college. I'll go to college eventually. Please, Mother. We couldn't afford it now anyway. Maybe Bill and I'll go together after we're married. Fat chance. Mrs. William Small at the second, queen of the freshman hop. Oh, look at Soda. He's got some new playmates. Hello, Soda. Jane, what have you heard from Bill? Oh, he's fine. I think he expects to see action any day now. Wouldn't it be fun to go back there on your honeymoon and visit all the places where he's fought? I don't think so. I want to get a little place all by ourselves. Just as far away from all that as... Well, what about a hospital on the Nile? Or I know, a cottage on the beach at Waikiki. You go surf riding and... Jane, will you take me along? Oh, Brig, how can you be so infantile? Oh, all right. I'll be getting married myself someday. And you'll be looking for an invitation from me. And then you'll be sorry you were so snooty about it. Well, come on, it's sort of you're coming. Hello, girls. Oh, hello, Mother. Hello, Mother. Oh, Brig, well, would you mind checking the oven for me? I've been making cookies. Oh, Mother, do I have to? Do as Mother asks, Brig. Oh, all right. Jane, dear, 
Come into the living room. I'd like to talk to you. What's the matter, Mother? Well, mayn't I talk to you if I want to? Well, of course, but you sound so strange. Oh, do I? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. What is it? Why couldn't Brig here? Is that why you sent her? Not about Pop. No. Sit down, darling. Jane, dear, I'm terribly proud of the way you've grown up. I'm sorry Pop missed it. Oh, is that all? It's sweet of you, Mother. No, dear, it isn't. Oh, it's so wonderful being at the hospital. I wish you could come and visit. I will. But some of it's so sad. If you could see those boys. And they're so cheerful, most of them. I know. They have such courage. I like to think that you have that kind of courage, too, darling. What are you trying to tell me? That... that when a man goes off to war, we have to be... It's Bill! The telegram came just a few minutes ago. It was addressed to you, but I opened it. Did it say he was missing, or... or what? I don't care if he's wounded. I don't care what's happened to him, if only... No, dear, it said he... It said he died in action at Salerno. Oh, it couldn't be. It couldn't be. It could be a mistake, couldn't it, Mother? I, I've heard that sometimes... Sometimes they get the names mixed up. Oh, no, honey, you mustn't fool yourself. That would be the worst thing of all. You've got to face it. As hard and cruel as it is. Yes, I know. I've known it all along. Oh, mother. Cry, darling. <laughs> Cry your heart out. <laughs> I won't try to tell you that you'll get over it soon. Because it'll take time. Maybe a long time. <laughs> Wonderful boy loved you, Jane. That doesn't happen to everybody. But I had him. Oh, such a little heart. I'll go help with supper. There's chicken fricassee, just the way you like it. Sounds fine. Isn't it funny? We were just talking. Brig was just saying about our, our, our honeymoon. Oh, my baby. <laughs> my poor, poor baby. He struggled so hard to be a soldier because I insisted on it. I, in my infinite wisdom. He would have been a soldier anyway, as things turned out. Yes, but all he learned from me was the glory, the decorations, the parade. Bill had character and courage. I know you gave him those. I hope so. He loved you. Mrs. Hilton, I'm not a child. He hated me. To whom did that telegram come? Why, he didn't even list me as next to kin. The telegram came to Jane, because they were to be married. Oh, I didn't know, of course. Well, I should have told you before. Colonel, if only you could believe that he loved you. Don't you remember the message he sent to you? That he was a small at all right, and before the war was over, you'd be proud of him. He did say that, didn't he? Yes, I am proud of him. My only grandchild had to die before I... Come in. Good evening, Jane. Come in, please. I... I thought perhaps I could bring you a little supper. I thank you. That's most thoughtful of you. 
I'm awfully sorry about. Would you, would you like to have this? I think he'd rather you. Jane, I'm awfully glad we're friends. So am I. I'll get you supper now, if you'll excuse me. Colonel, won't you have supper with us? Why, I should love to. I'll come right down, dear. All right, Mother. And I might have had that wonderful child as a granddaughter. Bill was fortunate to have known her. Bill deserved her. He was such a good boy. Yes, I dare say. The good die first, and they whose hearts are dry as summer dust burn to the socket. Stop a moment and rest in the shade, Mr. Williams. I can't imagine anything more pleasant than being out here, can you? Or do you miss the water? I love to sail myself, so I can understand it if you do. I hate it. I never want to see the ocean again. Would it, would it help you to talk about it? I hate the ocean. Of course you do, I understand. It's almost time for your lunch. Dr. Golden will be awfully angry with me if you're late. He's taken a great interest in you, you know. Me and the Merchant Marine? That was a joke in the first place. I've always hated the water, ever since I was a kid. But most boys love the water. They love to swim. I couldn't swim. One day, my brother Jimmy pushed me off the pier. And then he had to pull me out. He was always laughing at me and telling me not to be yellow. He told me not to be yellow when our ship was hit. That was the last time I ever saw him. You're not a coward, Danny. Fear's normal. We'll help you to understand that. And when you do, you won't be afraid of the water. You won't even be afraid of being afraid. Rest a while, Danny. You're a fine boy. I'm sorry to have interrupted you, Dr. Golden, but I was instructed to get the patient to bed. It's all right. He's had quite enough for one day. Doctor, will, will Mr. Williams be all right? In time, in time. These fine young men, they must have another chance at life, and we must work to give it to them. His burns seem almost healed. Yes, his burns, but the more serious injury, that I'm afraid will take more time. The injury to his mind? Is that what you mean? No, not to his mind. To his confidence in himself and in others. Yes, we must rebuild Danny Williams' life all the way back and all the way forward. Hasn't there ever been anyone close to you, Miss Hilton, for whom you would like to have done that? Yes. There was someone. Ah. We must not live in the past, my child. There's a whole wide broken world to men. Now come, come, I must have another patient. How would you like to do a tired old man a favor? Oh, anything, Doctor. Then smile for me. Let me see that young people still can smile as they used to long ago. Huh? Huh? Just as I remember. Good night, my child.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Colonel. Happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Hilton. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Brig. And thank you, Fadiga, for the beautiful cake. Better wait till you taste it, Colonel. I don't know how it's going to be. It's kind of a, an experimentation. Now you make a wish. And remember, if you want it to come true, you have to blow out all the candles with one breath. Really? All of them? Yes, indeed. Oh, don't you think we might allow the Colonel two breaths, Brig? Oh. No special dispensations are necessary. No special dinner. <laughs> now you have to get the first piece. Really, Bridget, I wasn't born yesterday. There are a few things that I do know. Bridget, he's here again. Soda, get down. Come here. I don't understand it. He never does that with anybody else. He's apparently very devoted to you. I can assure you I've taken every conceivable step to discourage his affection. Oh, I wonder who that could be. Is you anticipating callers, Miss Hilton? Mm -hmm. I'll answer it for Delia. Don't you bother your business. If it's Gladys, I'm not home. Tony. Yes, the bad penny again. How are you, J.D.? Oh, I'm fine, Tony. Brig wrote me about it. Please, don't talk about it. I understand. Who is it, Jane? You'll never guess. It's the Colonel's birthday. We're giving him a party. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant that better go. You do no such thing. You're just what we need. Not Lieutenant Willard. Lieutenant Commander to you. Not really. Tony! Congratulations. You didn't say you were coming back. I was going to write you, break, but I wasn't sure you still cared. You're just in time for some birthday cake. Good evening, Mr. Willard. How are you, sir? So you've been promoted. Then I suppose there must have been some reason for it. I'm sure I don't know what it could have been. I was sorry to hear about Bill. Thank you. Sit down, Tony. Hmm, that looks good. Where's Fadilia? Here I is, Lieutenant Willard. Fadilia, this makes it official. Yeah, give me that. I sure is glad to see you back. Should I move the rooms around like before, Miss Hilton? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't worry. I've got a room downtown this time. Uh, hmm. Never heard tell such a thing. Now. Oh, I almost forgot. I have something for you, Jane. Me? Well, didn't you bring me anything? Oh, great. It isn't anything, really. But when I saw it, I just couldn't resist getting it for Jane. Oh! <laughs> Oh, where on earth did you get it, Tony? You won't believe it, but it was practically the only thing left in the little shop in Salerno. I'm sorry, Jane. I didn't know where. It's all right, Tony. Well, isn't anybody interested in this cake? Oh, by the way, Fadilla, just what was the, uh, the experimentation you referred to in connection with this cake? I tried something new. I bought it. Now, you can clearly see there's nothing in the hand you're correct. Nothing at all that meets the human eye. I'll show you both sides to be sure I'm not holding back anything. Mm -hmm. Correct, Greg? Well, I suppose there's something there, all right, but I'll play along. How about you, sir? It's clear there's nothing in that hand you. You don't need to labor the point further. Tiresome, isn't it? Watch. Presto, change out. <laughs> I think I'd like to learn that trick, Mr. Willett. Might have used some of the dodos down at the Army and Navy Club. I'd be honored, sir. Good evening, Brig. Oh, hello, Is your Mr. mother Hawkins. at home? Oh, yes, mother's that home. That sounds like your favorite woman. Mrs. Hawkins, that voice has haunted me all the way across the Atlantic. Hello, Emily. I haven't seen hello, you in ages. Hello, dear. Good evening, Lieutenant Willett. I didn't know you were back in town. Oh, yes. I've learned a new trick. The Navy thought I ought to bring it home. You know, for purposes of morale. <sighs> I thought you already knew all the tricks, Lieutenant. Touché, as we used to say in Minneapolis. And this, I presume, is General Smollett. I've heard so much about you. I'm sorry, Emily. I thought you'd met before. No, but I must say I envy you, Anne, having such a distinguished man as your guest. It's I who should be envied, and it is Colonel Smollett, madam. Colonel Smollett, Lieutenant Commander Willett. Oh, I always get those things mixed up. 
I always say it doesn't matter what a man's rank is. It's his uh, character that counts, don't you think? Uh, hello, Jane. What's this I hear about you working at the hospital? I'm a nurse's aide. A nurse's aide? Oh, what a revolting idea for an unmarried girl of your age. Well, of course, our whole code of living seems to be completely ignored these days. And possibly it's none of my business. You're quite right, Mrs. Hawkins. It is none of your business. I must say, Lieutenant or Commander, or whatever you are, the Navy hasn't improved your manners any. Well, oh, please, Tony. Please, Emily. It's the Colonel's birthday, and we're trying to have a party. I'm sorry. I meant no offense to you, Jane. I simply feel that well-brought-up young girls shouldn't be permitted to have such intimate contact with all sorts of... All sorts of boys who've lost their arms and legs? They're young, too, lots of them. But they weren't too young for that, Mrs. Hawkins. And I don't think breeding entered into it, either. Bravo, Jane. I don't care to debate it with you, Jane. But surely there are women who are more suited to such... That's just it. There aren't women more suited. And women who might help, like you, Mrs. Hawkins. Think you're doing your part if you attend a canteen dance for your own pleasure. You're tired, honey. Why don't you go upstairs? Yes, Mother. But there are just one or two more things I want to say. Come on, darling. She's not worth it. We're not V girls. We're simply helping with the wreckage. <laughs> All right, Brick, let's go play with our dolls. Don't worry, Mrs. Hawkins. Please don't worry if our precious, well-bred hands come in contact with those mangled bodies. We'll survive, even when they don't. And Hilton, I don't know if this happened that you would permit a child of yours to talk that way without so much... Without so much as what? Thank heaven my child had the courage to say to you what should have been said long ago. And let me add that I'm ashamed. Ashamed that I've put up with you, that that I've even known you. Well, from now on, you needn't know me. But don't you think for a minute you have me fooled, Ann Hilton? I've not forgotten how you felt about your husband joining up. And may I ask just what other noble sacrifices you've made to give you the privilege of being so self-righteous? I'm afraid that's just it, Emily. I haven't really made any sacrifices. Oh, I haven't hoarded and cheated and done all the other selfish, unpatriotic things that you've done. But as far as making sacrifices, I'm afraid we're two of a kind. And the realization of it doesn't make me very proud or happy. Well. <sighs> Goodbye, Major. I think we've seen the last of Mrs. H for a while, but you never know. She dies hard. When I think of the good men they waste on kitchen police. I wish getting Emily out of the house was a solution to something, really. But... Well, at least it's a temporary solution to the problem of avoiding Emily Hawkins. How about a little nightcap for the three of us, Anne? I think I'll run up and see how Jane is, if you don't mind. You'll find some scotch on the sideboard. Oh, please don't go, Tony. I want to talk to you. I'll take myself off to bed. Good night, Willet. I rather like you, if I may say so. Couldn't be more pleased, sir. You'll ruin your big toe. Yeah, wouldn't that be awful? I'd never be able to place kick again, poor old Rutgers. Well, Tony, you didn't expect to find another front here at home, did you? Uh-uh, but our side won victory over gas power. Uh, how's Jane? Oh, she's fine. Her thinking is as clear as a bell. How am I, why don't you ask? Trying to figure out what sacrifices you can make, is that it? Don't. I'm sorry, but after all you've been through, to have to listen to you berate yourself. You wouldn't sit down like a good girl. Let me talk for a minute, would you? All right. I won't promise to listen. Look, Anne, what's your guess as to why I joined the Navy? Because you want to do your part just the way Tim did. Don't kid yourself, I'm no Tim. I joined up because 
top hat suddenly seemed a little silly, and I wanted to have some fun and excitement. I laughed up my sleeve at all the fellows who were giving out with noble motives, the four freedoms, and all the rest of it, but I found out that it all added up to a simple, corny phrase that I couldn't laugh off. Home sweet home. I know. You do know? Listen, Ann, you're doing a swell job here at home, holding things together. Those daughters of yours, they're pretty wonderful. I know Tim's going to be mighty pleased with them. Though I imagine he'll be a bit surprised to see how Jane grew up, Boom, without so much as a buy your leave. Yes, she grew up while Mother knitted. Or worse still, while Mother didn't even knit. And that's the point, Tony. Can't you see it? Boy, I see what you mean now about not listening. I guess I was pretty dull at that. All right, laugh at me. But it's settled in my mind once and for all. I have a husband who went off to fight for this home and for me. That's what you said, didn't you? And I have children. Children who had courage and intelligence while their mother lived in a dream world. Well, believe me, I've come out of it. I buy your home sweet home idea, Tony, but I want to do something about it. Or well, say something. Oh, don't tell me the glib Tony Willett's at a loss for words all of a sudden. Well, Annie, me girl, I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> I hope you'll think I was right, too, Tim. And that someday you'll be interested in reading this diary. And I hope you won't be too shocked when you hear that I'm actually training for work in a shipyard of all places. Yes, tremendous changes have taken place in the pampered woman who is your wife. It's hard even for me to realize that I'm studying to be a lady welder. <laughs> and doing very nicely, so it seems. Oh, Tim, I love it so. And I have such admiration for all these people. There's one woman I can't wait for you to meet. Her name is nothing like we ever heard at the country club. It's Zofia Kozlovska. And she likes me because she thinks I helped her through a most awful and tragic loneliness. I wish my little boy had lived, so he could have seen America. I used to read to him about it every night, when the shades were drawn and the sound of heavy boots marching down the street made my poor little Janka Shaken till I thought his bones would crack. And then we'd pray together that God would let us go to the fairyland across the sea. If only he could have been with me the day I went all by myself to the Statue of Liberty and read what it says there for the whole world to see. Do, do you know it, San Hilton? Did you ever read it? No. Sorry to say, I don't know it. Oh, I'll never forget it. <laughs> I know it so, so well here because I, I feel it so much here. It says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, Tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. You've helped light that lamp for me, Anna Hilton. And then, Tim, she said the most thrilling thing that has ever been said to me. She said, You are what I thought America was, what I meant when I prayed with little Yanka. And as in my own small way I help here in the shipyards, I hope I may be worthy of her words. Just as each night I pray that always I may be worthy of those other thrilling words. The first time and every time since that you've said, Remember, don't start until the door opens. When it does, let them have it. 
What's the matter, Bub? You look a little reluctant. It ain't that I don't trust you, but I'd like to have my money first. You've got a very suspicious nature. What's that? Lieutenant Solomon? Clear for action. Aye, aye, sir. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, wound young virgin, mother and child. Jane, Colonel, come on, somebody's here, they're singing. Come on, Colonel, get a move on. Silent night, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Colonel, I, I didn't want to wrap this in a box with fancy ribbon, but I knew you'd like to have it. Thank you, Jenny. Merry Christmas. Who's next on your team? Colonel Smalley. Get going, Colonel. You're our anchor man. Don't worry. We've given you a nice, easy one. Please don't be patronizing. I can act. <laughs> All right, go. Come on, we've only got a minute and a half. Well, you might wait until I've read it. Have you read it? Time. Let's go, Colonel. Anchor's away. That is not it. Please, Colonel. <laughs> two words. Oh, no, it isn't fair to talk. Well, what difference does it make if I say two or hold up two fingers? Come on, Colonel. Come on, Colonel. It's a half a minute already. <laughs> is it an animal of some kind? Come on, Danny Williams, give them a question. Is it a quotation? <laughs> Army mule. Oh. oh, they're being very stupid, Colonel. You're giving a wonderful performance. <laughs> oh, do something else. Oh, no, 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 oh. Rolling, ro rolling stone. Ah. Soda! Oh. <laughs> Bridget. Bridget? Uh, 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 no talking, Colonel. Soda. Soda. All right, Colonel. Now, don't get sore. Just try doing once more what you did before, and if we don't guess it, we'll give up. <laughs> hmm. Anybody could guess that. You can't guess, Fidelia. No fair. Oh, we can afford to be generous. Let them have Fidelia on their team. Bottoms up. Thank goodness. Was that it? Certainly that was it. <laughs> I'm certainly glad you weren't on their team the whole time, Fidelia. We gave them a terrible beating. How'd you guess it, Fidelia? Oh, it weren't nothing. I'm just naturally a uh, psychopathic. <laughs> Come on, don't be nervous. Come on. Mother, Gladys wants to say something. Well, hallelujah. Bring her in. This is Gladys Brown, everybody. She's a friend of mine. Come in, Gladys. She wants to say something to you. Come on, Gladys. It isn't hard. Honest. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, she made it anyway. I have big plans for her next year. Yes, yeah, she can be the class orator. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Coffee and sandwiches. Congratulations, sir. I thought you acted very good. Oh, it was nothing, really. Oh, I... Gee, that was fun. The Colonel's a good sport, isn't he? Yes, we all adore him. But, dear, when did you start specializing in this bird food? You won't tell anybody? There's a chicken leg I saved for you. That's more like it. You just sneak out by yourself. You'll find it on the second shelf in the icebox. It's a wonderful party, Mrs. Elton. Oh, it's Tony. He brings life to any party. And Tony's doomed to go through life as everybody's darling. Even to his men? <laughs> well, they don't think of him as darling exactly. Uh, hero worship's more like it. I bet he didn't tell you he's been recommended for the Navy Cross. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, he'll make jokes about it, but uh, he's very proud of it. Well, where did... Oh, I want to talk to you, John Paul Jones. What have I done now? The Navy Cross, that's what you've done. Yes, he told me. Do they give you a ribbon? Well, what does it look like? What are the colors? As a matter of fact, it looks just like that. You want to stop it, Tony? That This is an old one. It's last year's model. Listen, man, he'll joke about it, but he's really very proud of it. Well, he said the same thing about you. Well, uh, if you people will excuse oh, me, Oh, he I'll, did, I'll, didn't he? No, no, never mind about him. Come in here. I want to talk to you. I wish that guy Solomon would stop acting as my press agent. Yeah, what do I do with this? Well, what do you suppose you'd do with it? Finish it, of course, you wastrel. I could use some milk with it. Oh, honestly. 
I never knew heroes were so helpless. Here, look out. You know, Tony, I'm really very angry with you. I have to find things out from a stranger. Didn't think you'd be interested. Oh, oh of course not. No, all I want to know is if you found any new sugars in Sicily. Well, now, I don't want to shock you, but it's no wonder those Italians can paint. There was a dame standing right in the middle of the street with a big tub of spaghetti. And she had... She had the... Yeah, never mind what she had. I have a little imagination. Yeah. Well, even as I looked at her, I thought, she's good. But what are they all? What are all the women in the world compared with Anne? Oh, Tony, will you never stop? Oh, I'll never stop, Anne, as long as I can dream about you. If you ever thought the dream had a chance of coming true, you'd... I'd what, Anne? Oh. Finish it yourself. You make it pretty tough for me. I feel I'd been wrong about you all my life. I have to go looking for a new ideal. I'm afraid it's a little late for that. What's more, you'd run for your life. First, you'd wring my neck, as I'd expect and want you to. That's right, and what would be the fun in that? I'd never be able to break my heart over you anymore. Oh, tell me. Never grow up. Never, never. Or I'd lose something very dear to me. Something very dear to all of us. Right? All right. I'm going to sound awful silly someday making verbal passes at you when we're both in wheelchairs. <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> all right, now wipe the milk off your silly face and tell me in your usual accurate fashion how you became a hero. Well, I'll tell you. I suddenly thought it was kind of damp on deck and I looked down and seemed to be standing in a swimming pool. What I had on all my clothes. Well, goodbye, Jane. Goodbye. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I've signed on again, and I'll be shipping any day. Oh. You must be glad. Yes, I am. Jane, you've been wonderful to me. May I, may I write to you? I wish you would. I still contend that if there had been one lone, single, solitary grain of intelligence on our entire team... Oh, Colonel, stop right where you are. What's the matter? <laughs> and stop blushing. It's an old custom. Well, as I recall the custom, Mrs. Hilton, the ceremony isn't complete until everyone has participated. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. I haven't had an experience like this in... 45 years. Well, Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas, Colonel. Come on, Soda. Coming up, Mother? Not for a little while, darling. I have a few things I want to do. Good night. Good night, darling. Good night, Mother. Merry Christmas, Mother. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, darling. What are those, Fidelia? Mr. Hilton done sent these to me a long time ago and told me to put them under the Christmas tree, just like we've always done. Oh. Oh, now, 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 no tears, Fidelia. There's nothing to cry about. I can't help it. He sent me something, too. Mr. Hilton never forgot me, even when he's fighting them devils. He'll be so happy to hear that you're back on the old job again. Yes. Miss Hilton, can I confide you something? Yes, Fidelia. Brick sent her daddy his gift, just like nothing had happened. Of course she did. So did Jane. So did I. You, you all did that? Miss Hilton, I guess I just ain't on the right side of the Lord. I just ain't had the right kind of faith. But I will have. From now on, I'll be a true believer. And now I'm wishing you a good night, Miss Hilton. Good night.
Yes, read it, please. Oh, you're 